Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about payload. I had an issue. I was out in the field, literally far away from my house out in the country, trying to make a video for a YouTube or whatever, and um, the quad wouldn't lift off the ground. So I'll show a little video of it in a second here. All it would do is lift up about, uh, say, five feet off the ground. And uh, the wind was gusting about 14, maybe 20 or 30 out in the open field. So it was actually quite windy, but uh, it just couldn't keep up with it. The video I'll show in a second too is uh, you see the quad, it's going to fly away a little bit and crash. It's because this quad it had too much payload and it just couldn't compensate and it, I couldn't take control of it. So it literally just crashed. Um, people have asked me in my YouTube comments a lot about why the with the payload and everything it can't lift too much for some reason so it's one of the settings and i'll just add a link right now or not a link but the time of the video or whatever roughly where you can just jump to the fix so you don't have to watch me babble on about how i came up with the fix and how to troubleshoot or whatever so yeah so if you're having issues with your cx20 or any quadcopter with an apm it can be the original apm here like this or it could be the apm 2.6 if at one time it lifted up no problem, like your Go, your GoPro or gimbals and stuff like that, and for some reason now it just can't lift it anymore, you might have issues with one of your motors. If one of the motor ESCs or one of the motors is failing, what will happen is the quad will compensate for the lesser motor. So, of course, it's not going to lift. But I found a quick little fix anyways, thankfully, and it wasn't one of my motors that was blown. So if your issue is, is it's you have only 200 grams on it and it can't get higher than 5 feet, Hopefully this fix will help you guys out. So I'll just show these two videos now. Alright, so I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things I did before I figured out what the problem was, which you can also do as well. If my fix doesn't uh, fix your issue, at least it'll show you guys how to kind of uh, troubleshoot it. So I'm just going to turn this guy on. You got to make sure that you did the accelerometer uh, calibration and your remote calibration just to make sure it's actually level. Once it's on your table as well, I would take a level and just level the motors out just to make sure it's level. So I'm just going to arm it. What I'm going to do is just RPM test the motors. I'm not sure if you can see it. So 105 is not bad, but it should be about 110. So if you're getting less than 104, that might be too close. 103. So they're all pretty much calibrated the same. They're all sticking around. They're all sticking around 104, and we wanted about 110. So that's the first sign there's something wrong with the motors. The handy thing about this guy here is, if you remember my video about um, the ESC firmware I came up with for the BL Heli, for this motor here, it was actually off. So I attached these guys here to it and I reprogrammed it and I have better settings for this motor now. So I'm gonna add that into, the, uh, into one of my comments into that uh, video. So that's actually good because now it actually takes off really well. All right, so now we know there's a problem if it's sticking around 10,000 on this guy here for the RPMs. It doesn't really matter how accurate it is as long as it's accurate with uh, reliable readings like over and over again type thing. So even if it's not really going at 10,000, it doesn't matter as long as it's the same. Every time you point it, it gives off the same reading. All right, so the next thing I'm going to jump into is uh, Emission Planner. and I'm going to show you guys how to uh, troubleshoot it with it with the wires. All right, so I'm just going to connect my quad to Mission Planner. For me, I got to have to remove this wire here because it back feeds into the quadcopter with the USB power. All right, so go to radio calibration and turn on your remote. And this is just to confirm your throttle. 
Right, so is it connected? Just bring it all the way to go full throttle. And mine's at 1989. So that's usually a good sign that it's working. So I'll jump back to the quad now. All right, so with this guy here, what you want to do is on your CX-20 on number um, five, and it would be number minus one. I'm not sure if you can see that here, but the minus one here usually comes with the CX-20, usually comes with the three wires. I removed the two of them. And uh, I would just suggest doing the same thing. Just remove those two wires, and then you can use one of the servo wires for it. So what you want to do now is remove all these wires from your motor. I'll put up a thing after showing you guys where they re-go or whatever. And this is the same process for the original CX-20 as well, for the APM or whatever. Um, this guy would be sitting this way and the motors would be here on the, this side on the left side here. What you'll want to do is with one of your extra servo wires, is jump it from number say two, doesn't matter which one, as long as it's one, two, three, four, or you can try each one of them. Jump this guy here to number eight on the APM, on the input side, like that. On this, all right, so I'll just show this again because I was kind of out of camera on showing the APM 2.5 from the CX-20. So this guy here on the inputs, put one on number eight up there, and then on the motor outputs, just put it on number two, or you can test one, two, three, four, just by, you can even move it while it's on, just be careful you don't short it out. So why it's good to use an end like this. All right, so on this APM here, the USB is on the right side when it's inside your quad facing forward. Your motors would be on the bottom here, it goes one, two, three, four. So just stick this guy in the corner on number one, on this side. Then flip your quad this way, and it would go one on this one, on that side. So it's on the left side, on this side, in the front, and if you're facing this way, left side. You should still have an empty spot there, because your servo wires go, not your servo, your channel wires go here, like that. All right, so that's how that guy gets hooked up. So I'm just going to hook this guy back up to number two, and to number eight, on this side. You can do it in six or seven as well. All right, so it look like that. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Get some more light there. All right, so once it's like that, just plug in your CX-20 again. Not the battery, just the USB cable. And then turn on your remote and connect to Mission Planner again. Right, so now you're gonna to wanna to arm it. Again, you have to make sure the quad is pretty stable here. Your numbers will be off just a little bit. So I'm gonna arm it. Now I'm gonna raise the throttle up on the transmitter. Now notice here it says 1988, and under radio eight, it says 1795. Now that's the biggest hint something's wrong. So basically it's only 200 PW, PWMs over center. And that's really bad. And that would explain why it has no lift. So the way to fix that again is now you don't have to reboot or nothing. You just go to config and tuning. Scroll down to the MOT or the M's. If you don't see this, I'll just show this quickly. Go to planner and then go to um, layout and set it to advanced. Sorry to jump around there. I go back to full parameter list. And you can also uh, back up your params too if you're worried about messing something up. I'll scroll, I'll scroll down to the M. And what you're looking for here is MOT TCRV enabled. Now the quickest way to fix this is just set this to zero. Write your parameter. Go back to initial setup, and uh, you'll have to rearm it again. Then move the throttle up, and now take note. This one's actually higher than this one, but that's still awesome, and it works. 
So now I'm going to jump back to the quad and show you the RP or the um, RPMs. All right, so now we can remove this guy here and hook up the motors back up. So this is motor one. This is motor two. Motor three. If I can find them. Make sure it's in the right. And motor four. And then I'm going to hook this power back up again. Alright, so I'm going to plug this guy in and test out the motors. We got X800 there, or 500 ish. Good. That's good. The reason why the numbers might be a little bit different too is it depends which way. If uh, it's not level 100%, your, number, your numbers will obviously change. Oops, just turned off the remote. All right guys, so that's it for my fix. Hopefully I didn't babble on too much. I originally did it with an Arduino. I test, I just added some code to this and I could just check the PWMs just by plugging this into the motor outputs. So if you don't have the same kind of APM, you might want to think about just doing something like that. It's really easy to do. All right guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and I really hope this helps you guys out. And now I can continue on with one of my last videos for the CX-20, maybe. All right.